opposition to the HSUS and PETA and people like that who try to tell us what to do. Next question, and we'll start with this time with Mr. Dugard. Who would be your agriculture secretary and why? Well, I haven't made that decision. I guess I'm working on step one, which uh, is in November. But I, I will say I have a, a high appreciation and respect for Bill Even, and I was sorry when he left uh, the Department of Ag to go to DuPont because he is a, uh, a smart uh, guy that grew up on the farm, still is an active farmer, and uh, I really had a lot of respect for him, and I probably would have asked him to stay. Um, I've asked for his help in looking at other folks. Uh, if, if I'm lucky enough to be elected, I want to look at uh, folks that are working for the department, but also people that aren't. And I think it's premature for me to say I picked a guy because uh, uh, I'm trying to get the job myself. And, uh, uh, but I will give a lot of time and attention because uh, that is a very key role in our state. Ag is number one. It's the giant of our economy. And the Secretary of Ag is, is an, uh, an important role. Scott Heideprim, same question. Who would be your ag Agriculture Secretary and why? Well, I think, it, I think it is premature to name a name right now, but it's got to be someone involved in production agriculture in South Dakota. It's got to be someone who, uh, who knows agriculture from the ground up. It's probably someone who is here today, frankly, someone who, who really takes something like this experience uh, seriously and it, and wants to know everything that's going on in agriculture in South Dakota today. There isn't a better place to learn that than, uh, than here at the State Fair. I have to tell you that the, the next Secretary of Agriculture is going to have challenges uh, in front of him, big challenges. We've had uh, the growth in government specifically in that department uh, from 170 employees over the last eight years to 233 employees. Uh, we need to ask ourselves whether growing the bureaucracy at the state level in the Department of Agriculture is the best use of taxpayers' dollars. Uh, we really need to be able to look at property taxes, and I think the Secretary of Agriculture plays a key role in the whole property tax debate. The Secretary's got to be the one who looks out for agriculture, protects agriculture to make sure that the tax structure when it comes to property taxes is really and truly fair. Uh, I'm going to look to that person to really develop ag policy, and of course, you know, much of ag policy is done at the federal level. So the Secretary of Agriculture in South Dakota is going to have to have a great working relationship with our congressional delegation as well. I'm confident that person is out there, uh, and together we're going to do great things for South Dakota. Yay. Right, unless there's uh, anything further, we'll go on to the next question. And uh, well, we got. I think we're going to have to declare a moratorium. We've, probably have more questions that we're going to be able to get to, but we're glad you're interested. Uh, Mr. Heiderprim, this question is for you to start. We all know that the economy has been hit hard in recent years. What will you do to develop agriculture-related jobs in rural South Dakota? Well, there are a couple things we can do. We've talked about finishing ag products at home. That's really important. Um, honestly, we need to kick uh, that ethanol standard up to E15, and the latest indication is that that's going to create 163,000 green collar jobs in the United States. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of being dependent on foreign oil, and I can't think of a better way to stock it than using South Dakota products. That's one of the biggest things that we can do here in South Dakota and in the United States to free ourselves uh, from that addiction and actually get back to what's important in South Dakota. We need a governor who's going to take the message that, frankly, ethanol is great. It's great for the economy, it's great for your engines, it's great for everything, and we need to continue to develop it. And that means keeping the incentives in place that we have now. We have to do that as well. But getting to E15, at least by next year, we have got to stay on top of the EPA until they agree that E15 is the way to go. Once that happens, once we break through that wall, the future is very, very bright for ethanol, and that's where we have to go. But we can't be afraid of, uh, of green energy jobs here in South Dakota. That's just going to be fantastic for all of us in South Dakota, and so let's keep focused on that as well. Yeah. Mr. Dugard, same question. What will you do to develop agriculture-related jobs in rural South Dakota? Well, no, 
there's no question that my number one priority as governor, if elected, will be job creation and economic development. Uh, several months ago, I released a jobs plan, which you can find on my website, dennisforgov.com, and there is a significant section that's related to agriculture jobs. There's lots of opportunity for South Dakota in agriculture. Uh, export markets. In South Dakota, we really haven't pursued that as a course to uh, find more markets for our grain and beef and, and pork and, and turkey. Uh, Jack Delrymple, who's the Lieutenant Governor of North Dakota and is a friend of mine, has pursued export markets very successfully for North Dakota, and that's not, some, not something we should leave on the table. We should pursue that as well. Certainly, again, finding markets for our products within our own state is important. Ethanol was mentioned. It's, a, it's the poster child for value added in South Dakota. Not only did we uh, build our ethanol production from when, when Governor Rounds and I took office, 233 million bushels per year to now it's uh, 14 full-time scale plant plants uh, developing a billion gallons of ethanol. But we've really saturated the ethanol demand with the present production facilities. We need E15 to get past the blend wall. And as governor, I will use the bully pulpit in Washington and in South Dakota to push the EPA to finally make their decision on E15 because we need that for our corn farmers. Anything further before we go on to another? Well, I would, yeah, I would like to add a couple things about the ethanol debate because it's really important. I think when we talk about using the bully pulpit uh, as the governor of South Dakota, you can talk about it, but then there's action. And in South Dakota, uh, we have not had action from the governor when it comes to blender pumps, when it comes to flex fuel vehicles, when it comes to using E85 or E10. Why we buy as much unleaded gasoline at the state of South Dakota level uh, is beyond me, but we ought to stop it. And we ought to set an example for the state of South Dakota that, hey, ethanol is good. We believe in it so strongly that we're getting flex fuel vehicles. We're putting blender pumps at DOT locations. We're, we're having the Mitch Fargen incentive plan for uh, blender pumps throughout South Dakota. Uh, and, and, and the future is very bright with, uh, with ethanol if we get leadership from the governor's office. That's not to walk away from those things. We need to do those things. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you for bringing that up. The uh, ethanol blender pump issue is one I believe in strongly. Uh, as governor, when we have funds available, we're going to dedicate money to blender pump uh, incentive plans. Uh, the last legislature and the governor signed a bill that provided a million dollars in federal fund grants to encourage ethanol blender pumps in consumer accessible locations around the state. Right now, as of June 1, there were uh, around 157 blender pump locations available in the nation. There were 49 such in Minnesota. We had 42 in South Dakota. By the end of this year, we'll have nearly 100 blender pumps in South Dakota. Not just at DOT facilities, but at facilities you and I can go to. We can mandate blender pumps and spend two million bucks in blender pumps at our DOT facilities, but that makes no sense in terms of the best use of that money. We, as a state, use less than 1% of the fuel. If we can get those blender pumps at consumer accessible locations, that makes a lot more sense. Further, the, United, or the, uh, the uh, state of South Dakota is right now testing E30 in all flex fuel vehicles that the state has, and we do have a policy to always buy flex fuel vehicles where available. And if we can demonstrate that E30 provides the same kind of mileage as E10, we'll number one, of course, use E30 at all of our locations, whether we have blender pumps or we'll just fill our E10 tanks with E30, but we'll also publicize it. And isn't that the best way to demonstrate that ethanol is good? By saying, look, here's the proof, we're using it, everyone else should use it because it's the right thing, not because it's mandated. <laughs> This next question comes from uh, someone in the audience, and uh, there are concerns, a little feedback there, uh, sorry about that, there are concerns that our neighboring states 
of Minnesota and Iowa, and, th and this is for you first, uh, Mr. Dugard, on this go-round. There are concerns that our neighboring